Um, looks like it's three, so uh, we're going to get started. Um, first of all, welcome. This is uh, Habits of an Effective Drupal Contributor with myself, Owen, and Matthew Tift. Um, so we're going to take you on a journey of our contribution history and things we learned along the way. Yes, we thought we'd start with a thank you note. Thank you for coming, rather than ending. We have a lot of thanks for the Drupal community, the Drupal Association, and if you're here, that means you're interested in contributing or maybe you're lost in the wrong room. Either way, thank you for coming. We're glad to have you here, and I'll hand it over to Owen. Yeah, we're going to be juggling the, uh, juggling the podium today, which is always going to be great. Um, so we, we want to try and inspire you and everyone to um, find out how to contribute. Uh, this is our take on the community. There are many takes on the community. There are many people in this community, and everyone's different, but... We tr we're going to try and aim to be slightly more interesting than the documentation, maybe a little bit more human than the documentation, and maybe fill in some gaps that are, that are missing. And we've got this snazzy icon that if you see that on the slide, you better prepare because there is a fun anecdote to tell you. <laughs> um, but what we'd like you all to leave this talk with uh, is a sense of like how to look after yourself in the community, how to contribute meaningfully, and generally how to interact um, with the community at large. So uh, we're gonna tell you a little bit about ourselves first, and then we'll get into the, the details. Owen made this slide. <laughs> so my name is Matthew Tift. I'm a lead engineer at Lullabot, and I have been doing lots of things in the Drupal community for a while. This is my 14th consecutive DrupalCon North America. I've spoken at DrupalCon. This is my seventh talk. That does not make me an expert. I'm just learning Drupal along with everybody else. So I mentioned those things just to say a little bit about how I've been involved. I've continued to contribute, and I have organized a few different core initiatives, and I'll tell a little bit of stories about those later. But I also am a yoga teacher, and I have looked for ways to integrate my yoga practice into some of my Drupal development. So I might we we have a few of those themes in here, and. I'll hand it back to Owen. Thank you. Uh, looks like I need some yoga based on that photo. Um, I've been working in Drupal for 10 years. I'm a senior backend developer at Lullabot. Uh, I've been with them for two years. Um, I'm the maintainer for recurring events and the field inheritance modules, uh, which have a modest, I guess, install base. Uh, but that's cool. I'm cool with that. Uh, I'm a hobbyist electronic musician. Um, if you pay me enough, I'll tell you where to look. Um, and this is my first DrupalCon session, but I've presented at GovCon and a couple of local camps over the years. Um, but before we move on, we're going to tell you a little bit more about Lullabot. I'm sure you've heard about us before, but it never hurts. Yeah, here we go. We're one of the oldest Drupal agencies. We're an employee-owned company. You can see some of the clients that we work with. I've worked at Lullabot for nine years, and there you go. Our marketing folks are happy now. <laughs> yeah, legal obligations have been done. So the first thing to point out, this is not a complete guide. There is many, 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 many doc docs out there that describe things in detail, um, please read those and update them. You have the power to update them. If they're out of date, if, if you're coming to them and they, they don't ring true or that 
wh whatever, you, ha you can go away and update these documentation uh, files. Um, but yeah, we, wanna, we want to share experiences because we feel it's one thing reading documentation, it's one thing being told go install DDEV or go do this, go do that. But really that doesn't give you a, a, a great sense of what's involved and what sort of uh, issues you might come across and what sort of pro tips we, we have from our years of, uh, of, of contributing. So um, we want to tell you a little bit about what, it's probably important to say what is effective before we get into being effective. So over to Matt. I want to reiterate that we're not here to tell you what to do, that we have discussed a lot about what we thought would make an effective contributor to the Drupal community. And we feel that in a way it's a personal journey. So we encourage you to start with figuring out what it would, what would give you joy. And that, that comes from a sense of doing things not just out of obligation, although there's definitely a sense of privilege in to be able to choose to contribute. We're a couple of white guys who work at Lullabot and we have time set aside to do that, so we realize not everybody can make that choice, but we're talking to people who are at DrupalCon, and if you do decide you do want to contribute and be part of this project, or if you're new to the project, start with something that gives you joy is what we, what we think. So there are lots of different reasons, ways you could measure your effectiveness. And some people want to do things because they get credit. And the Drupal community is very good at giving credit. We'll talk a little bit more about that. You might hear, be here because you want to help with one of our big initiatives, the kinds of things that Dries will mention up on the Dries note, or that get a lot of press in the Drupal community. And you know, some of you might measure your effectiveness based on what your employer told you to do, that they said you should contribute and you know, help us get up higher on the, the uh, I'm forgetting the name, the marketplace page for organizations. So there's lots of different ways that you could measure your effectiveness. So we, we just encourage folks, especially if you're new, to start with figuring out what you want to do, and, and not just grabbing random things because you think maybe it's a good idea. Part of being you is that we're all human. We're all coming from different backgrounds and perspectives. Um, one thing that at times can get a bit Aggressive, in, in issue queues, people can take exception to each other, they can argue, they can accuse people of things such as trying to game the system. The thing we wanna um, really push is we're all human. We, we, just because someone says something in, in a particular way that maybe you don't like, you try and assume positive intent. Um, there, are, the, there is a diversity of access, as, as Matthew said. Not everyone has the time and not everyone has the resources to do maybe what you wish they would do. So try and be inclusive of everyone. Try and listen to different perspectives and um, ensure you abide by the Drupal Code of Conduct. That's, uh, that extends across not just being here at DrupalCon, but just general interactions with people in the community. Um, so our first little icon, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I am the maintainer of recurring events, and two people started going at it in one of my, uh, in an issue queue, and accusing each other of not testing properly and trying to game the system, and it got very awkward and aggressive, and it's hard, it's hard to deal with that sort of thing, but we really need to take a step back and try, like, if you're the one who's getting upset, try and take a minute and uh, take a breath. It's, 
it shows passion. And, and that's, I think that's one thing. We're, we're passionate about improving Drupal. Um, we're all here to try and improve Drupal as a product, as a community. Name calling doesn't help. And um, try and treat, treat people with respect and try and avoid aggressive terms and aggressive, uh, passive aggressive uh, writing and stuff like that. Just treat someone how you, how you choose, you would like to be uh, treated. So that's one of our first main themes is just don't be a jerk, be a nice human. Another theme that maybe seems obvious to people who have been contributing to Drupal for a while is that a lot of things happen in our issue queues. And if, you're, if you are new to Drupal, you might know that, you know, for example, lots of work in other projects happens on GitHub. And that's kind of a unique feature of Drupal is we have issue queues that work in a little bit of a different way sometimes. We have a different workflow. We still you know, share patches and things like that, although that process is changing quite a bit. But we do encourage you to contribute and use the issue queues whenever possible. Sometimes people who are new to the community might work like they work on other projects and do things in GitHub and just bring it over. But there's a lot of folks in the Drupal community that encourage to do the work on Drupal.org and help interact with the community. That that's one of those habits that that folks can get involved with other developers and be more transparent rather than the in most cases, it doesn't always work this way, but in most cases you can you can do that work in the Drupal issue queues. And that when you're interacting in those queues that you know people do have those flare-ups people have imposter syndrome people get scared and just remembering that you're dealing with other human beings and that that's what owen was saying before that doesn't mean that we're all going to agree but i have found personally that if i am writing something in those issue queues that comes from a place of fear or anger that, that doesn't always turn out so well. So remembering that, um, that it, sometimes we don't get to see the whole human being in the issue queue. The other thing you know, won't necessarily know or see in the issue queue is what we've called invisible priorities. And they're the things that uh, come down from higher up, uh, maybe as Matthew said at the trees note, there are initiatives that are being pushed by the Drupal community as, as a whole. But on a like a micro issue level, it might not be obvious which, which initiative something aligns with. So f issues move at different speeds and um, Drupal core moves at a different speed to contrib. And it, a lot of it depends on as I said, like initiatives, those those things that are behind the initiatives get the most attention, which is which is great. But maybe this the smaller like niche issues that are hidden in the dark corners of, of Drupal don't get as much attention. And so if you find yourself in that space, you, something might take months, it could take years to to fully make its way into Drupal core. Um, and things in Drupal core cause moving constantly. It's a constantly evolving product, and so things come, become out, outdated pretty quickly. Uh, so there may be requests to update your pull requests, re-roll them for new, uh, for new versions of core, and that can take time and maybe um, slow things down a little bit, but it's, it's all for a reason. Um, contrib modules depend on how the maintainers work really, you're at the whim of them, um, whether they are active, whether they only get a couple of hours a month, or, or whatever, whatever it happens to be. Um, so it can move slower, it, it, but it is a different experience. It can also move faster because there's less red tape and, and, and reviews, and maybe you just reach out to them on Slack, and you're like, hey, can you help me merge this patch, and they'll go ahead and get it. Uh, but if you find contrib moving slowly, you can also ask for maintainership uh, or co-maintainership if you want and see if you can help things moving. 
Um, so another story, I've been working on an issue in core <laughs> for two years, and I have added 56 patches to that, and it's still not merged. Now, part of that's my fault. Like, there have been some updates recently asking for changes, um, but part of it is just the nature of it's a really niche bug. It's, it doesn't touch many, uh, certainly doesn't touch many contrib modules. Not many people use that part of Drupal, and so it can be frustrating. Like, it, you just want this thing to move and you're not getting the traction, or it takes a month for someone to get back to you. But that's the nature of the beast. Like, some things move quickly. If they're aligned with initiatives, they move even quicker. But some things are just slow. And if you, if you accept that and don't set your expectations too high for certain aspects of uh, core contribution, it's fine. But you can also reach out. And you can, you can find out who the maintainers of the subsystems are. And you can ask them to help move along. But also, if you're at DrupalCon, you can pester people in person. Do that. Oh, we're going to talk about credits, and Oprah was kind enough to record this GIF for us. Thanks. Um, Matthew is better at position to talk about credits than I am, so he's going to take over. That's not a credit. So <laughs> there are lots of ways that you contribute. Con lots of ways that you can contribute. And Owen just mentioned working at issue queues, creating patches, working on things like that. Another way you can contribute is to write articles about Drupal. So I just thought I'd mention, I wrote this article a while back in 2015, and that is a contribution to the Drupal community. And the Drupal Association board meeting actually today, she was, somebody was talking about marketing being another way, and you, they used the word um, marketing maker, because there's this focus on makers now. So you could be an article maker for the community. I, I did that, and then, I don't know, I sort of got lucky or whatever, but Dries reached out to me, and we started looking, he, looking into the Drupal credit system. So I learned about this alongside Dries writing this article back in 2016, and it, it was looking at how people sponsor what, well, we'll get more into the issue credit stuff, but. That's how I got learning into. That's how I got into learning about the credit system. And the credit system, basically, as I had mentioned before, is a way to reward contributions. It's unique. So this is another thing. Again, if you're new to the community, there is nothing else out there like this, as far as I know. And I've been involved with lots of other communities that help measure community health. And credits don't just measure code. You can get credits for joining a meeting, project management, planning, all these other things. When I've helped with some initiatives, for example, we'll have a meeting and people that attend, you know, you get a credit. And this is one of those systems that allows us to measure who sponsors Drupal development. And for example, we know that work that Dries and I did, he's been updating that post every year since. We know that two thirds of the work in those issue queues now is sponsored. So that gives you another insight into how people that are effective might be working. If people are getting lots of credits and lots of people are getting credits and they're sponsored, well, that might be one way that if you view credits as effective. So, uh, the credit system, this, in case you haven't seen the issue queue, it, this is kind of how it works, where you can assign credit to yourself, you can volunteer, or you can say you're working for your company, or you can say you're volunteering. So for example, I could say I am volunteering on my own time because sometimes I was working away from work on an issue. I could be working on behalf of Lullabot, and then I could mention my client. So there have been times when I've checked all of those boxes when I, when I had certain clients where I was doing you know, a little extra work. And the credit system and the issue credits in the Drupal issue queue give the maintainers tools to help uh, determine who has been active in that issue and to decide who gets credit. So again, I don't want to equate 
credits with being effective, but this is a big part of our Drupal community, so maybe one, of the, one habit, depending on your level of interest in contributing and how you contribute, would be to understand a little bit about how the system works. And, you know, you can, like, I got credit for being on a podcast talking about the Drupal credit system. I guess this is kind of meta here. And this is, the, this is what I meant, that where this, in other communities, you wouldn't really get credit. You would only get credit for code. But the Drupal community is unique in that sense that you can get credit for lots of things. And a lot of people that have been around the Drupal community for a long time don't know that. Uh, when I was organizing the Olivero initiative, one of the things I always did is every time we had a meeting, everybody who showed up, they all got credit, and then somebody has to keep track of that. So that's another way, by the way, if you want to get involved, is to, you know, a little understanding of this can help you be more effective, be more transparent, be more beneficial. So people can rack up credits in all kinds of areas. Amy June, she has a lot of these things. That, so I mentioned meetings and whatnot. And so she, people plan camps and get credit. They, you know, work on core, mentoring, all these other things uh, listed here. There's lots of ways that an individual can get credit. And then, of course, your work can your employer can get credit, the organization that you're doing work for. It's really a complex system, actually. And this, I, I wanna sort of, again, reiterate that this is kind of a unique system. When I've been, when I've talked about this in other communities, people, people kind of think, oh, wow, I want that. That's nice, that's, that's fancy. And as a matter of fact, I attended a bunch of meetings, working group meetings of the chaos community, which is the community health analytics open source software. These are people that just measure community health. And we actually used Drupal's credit system for a, a specific metric on contribution attribution. In other words, our community became the model for the main organization that helps mo measure community health. And I know that's kind of confusing, but essentially we use that model and we're trying to get that into other places, our, uh, like GitLab for when we move over there, but also GitHub. And I've written a lot about these topics and I just, this is, I guess this is sort of a plug, but you know, if you, it, uh, this is more like saying, if you wanna learn more about like leaderboards, the recognition system, the history of how Drupal's like marketplace page. I've written about a lot of these things and you can find more about that on my blog and, and elsewhere. Uh, earlier I mentioned that uh, people try to manipulate the credit system. I mean, if it's used in the uh, organization marketplace uh, or whatever it's called, we can't remember between us. Um, There'll be, there'll be people out there trying to manipulate it, and there are people out there successfully manipulating it. Um, but uh, our view is, if you're an effective developer, you're not, you're not manipulating anything. You're, you're, you're doing your job, or you're doing something that brings you joy, and you're happening, you, you happen to be getting credit for it. Um, this was actually, I think it was mentioned in one of the Pitchburg ideas yesterday that, that um, trying to figure out a way to remove the, uh, the ability or lessen the ability of uh, credit system manipulation. Um, the other thing, like recognition as a whole, part of that can be credit, um, part of it could, could be something else, but it's a scale, and the scale begins at no, no recognition whatsoever. You do a thing, no one else sees it, but it works for you, cool. Um, but one of the things we really like about the, the community is, so, is sometimes people get name dropped on the, at, at the, uh, the Dries note on stage live at DrupalCon. That's probably like the, the highest, one of the best rituals around and one of the highest accolades, like you got name dropped by Dries on stage. Um, and that's cool. I, not a lot of other places do that as far as we can tell. Um, and there's also uh, people get mentioned by name for 
uh, their contributions like, and uh, the Aaron Winborn Award is a really special award to this community. And that's, that's all about being part of the community and contributing in an effective way. Um, so how do we contribute? Uh, going to DrupalCon is a great start, so good on you, uh, fabulous job. But there are also camps out there, lots of smaller camps that need people, need attendance, uh, so you should, you should try go to those as well. Uh, we've mentioned it a bunch, it's a, it's a huge theme throughout our, our um, presentation. Try and find things that are meaningful to you and contribute to those because those are the things that are gonna bring you the most joy. They're the things that you're gonna um, probably invest more of yourself in and uh, it's, it's just a really good way to, to feel good about yourself and your contributions as a whole uh, to the community. One other thing we try to talk about is try not to worry or invest too much of yourself in the results. Like enjoy the process, enjoy the fact that you're part of a bigger community, you're contributing in ways that you want to contribute. If the results come, if, if something you contribute ends up in core, that's awesome. Uh, if something you contribute is a patch that only you or your colleagues use, Hey, that's cool too. It doesn't. It doesn't. The, the results don't matter as much as being there and uh, participating. Uh, the other thing we want to talk about, but there's a slide later, is uh, the contribution sprints, and they're not just for coders. So if you haven't been to one, go to one. Uh, you're here. You might as well make, uh, take advantage of being here. Um, and actually, that's the way that both Matthew and I got our first contrib credits, uh, our core credits, is we went to, we had no idea what we were doing. I know I sat there looking around like, everyone seems to know what's happening and I, I don't even know where I am. And a mentor came up to me, he sat me down, he, he, he made sure I had all the tools I needed and he found a, an issue that I could work on. So that was how I got my first contrib credits, uh, uh, my first core credit, sorry, and Without the first time contribution sprint, I don't know if I would be here right now. Uh, I probably wouldn't, would be less informed, certainly, but it's a really, really good way to get started. And I definitely recommend it for, for everyone. Um, other ways to get involved, Drupal Slack. Uh, I didn't know about Drupal Slack for, a, for probably too long. Um, found it years ago now, but um, yeah. Join, join Slack, there's a lot of stuff that, uh, lots of conversations and a lot of um, collaboration on fixing issues, people asking questions. It's a really good way to learn about Drupal. And a, uh, you may know or you may not know a web chick or Angie Byron, she, uh, they got their first start this way. They went on Slack they saw, uh, and they've spoken IRC. about this. What, sorry? IRC. IRC at the time, yeah, sorry. Uh, they've spoken about this multiple times. They went in, there were questions being asked, and they went and found out how to answer those questions. That is a great way to help not just yourself learn, but help uh, other people learn. And that, th there's that moment, like uh, issue queues are very asynchronous. Like things can take, as I said, days, weeks, months, whatever, to, to get moving. Helping someone out in the moment when they need help like, like in, in, in Slack is such a help to the community. And, and honestly, I wish it happened more. And uh, I think we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, more contribution. So like I said, starting with whatever gives you joy. And I guess for me, maybe I'm a little bit of a prima donna or something like that, but sometimes I like being part of these big initiatives. It seems fun. It seems fun to to get something done that's big. And the way that I, I got involved with working on the configuration management initiative, there's this configuration system in Drupal that wasn't always there, and I went to a sprint one time. Again, going to sprints, going to camps, these kinds of things can be good habits for some folks. I sat down at a table, somehow I ended up next to XJM and Dries, and, and XJM just said, hey Matthew, do you wanna help get CMI over the finish line? So I said, well sure, like that sounds like fun, and lots of people wanted that to happen. So 
I got involved, and I didn't really know anything about it at the time when, when it was being built. And I just started learning about it. I started breaking down a big, complex thing that I didn't really understand into small chunks. I looked at another initiative lead. I saw that uh, Gabor, who was doing the multilingual initiative, he created this site that was like updates about the multilingual site. So I copied him. And I created one for the configuration management. And I started figuring out what the principles were. And I started blogging about it. So again, this didn't require a ton of coding. It, it, it was help. I'm a back-end developer by trade, I guess you could say. So I knew some of this stuff. But I started just doing whatever I could to share the information. So sharing could be another effective way to contribute to the community. You don't need to be intimidated. Uh, more recently, I, my friend and colleague, Mike Herschel, was working on the Olivero Initiative. And I got joy out of wanting to help Mike, because I could see he had, you know, he's, if you've ever been around Mike, he's kind of a, f a fun guy to be around. And he, he was working on this, and clearly he needed help. So I just, again, said, oh, I can try and help you get this thing done. And I, like, organized meetings. I'm not a front-end developer. I, ver I, ver I did very little front-end code on this. I did some back-end things here and there. But again, I just sort of said, hey, I'll help out. And when there's big initiatives, like lots of people want to have a front end theme, or at the time they did, because we had Bartik before that, and we'd had it for however long it was, a decade or more. Well, so getting involved in big initiatives is another way where if you like being you know, part of an initiatives, you know, that's, that's very different. I'm not, one of those maybe not as more effective than the other in terms of like big initiative versus one patch that lasts two years. But there are ways where I've found it's difficult to be effective. So I, like I said, I'm a yoga teacher. And like I've thought it'd be fun to be able to bring yoga to the Drupal community. But I haven't figured out an effective way to do that. <laughs> I. I don't know the Drupal way to do that. I don't know how I would utilize the issue queue. I don't know how I would utilize the rest of the Drupal community, so I'm, I'm kind of working on it. But in other words, I, I wanted to make a clear point that there are some things that the community really wants, like a new theme. There are other things where it might be difficult to convince the community that they need yoga. So. When I say what brings you joy, that you might get le different levels of effectiveness. But I would encourage all of you, let's just, let's just do a little experiment. If, if you have a laptop, maybe you want to close your laptop for just a second. And just, and just pause, really, literally. We don't do this a lot at DrupalCon. And maybe sit up in your chair. And if, if you'd like, if it feels safe, and comfortable, you could blink your eyes closed. And just think to yourself, what would give me joy to be able to help others in the Drupal community? And just notice how your mind reacts. Do you feel like, oh man, I would like to write an article? build a module, start a podcast, help somebody learn PHP. What gives you joy? And then feel free to blink your eyes back open. And if you'd like, write down whatever came to mind and use that later in our contribution day tomorrow. But I would encourage you to literally pause, think about it, because oftentimes people will just jump into stuff and not necessarily think about it, and then they get stuck, and then they feel like they're responsible or whatever. But if you maybe start from that point, see what sticks. That felt borderline yoga-ish. Yeah. <laughs> so you figured it out. Um, Yes, as, as we've been saying, uh, contribution sprints are happening this week. General contribution happens every day. 
but the first time contributor sprint is tomorrow. Even if you don't want to contribute then and there, and you just want to see how it works, go on down. It, it really is worthwhile. Um, we both got our starts there, and it was it set us up for the for the future. So, yeah, please please try and attend contribution. Um, it, it helps the community out a lot. So we should probably circle back to habits. Like, what are the habits of an effective contributor? We've spoken a lot about. Uh, different things, like enjoying what you do, prioritizing impact is aligning yourself with core initiatives, that sort of thing. Strive for excellence, like treating each other with dignity and respect. And as a community, we're better than we are individually. But do you know what these are? Ha has anyone been paying attention to the documentation? These are actually the... Uh, my slide is not progressing, that's fantastic. Drupal's values, fantastic. So uh, if you wanna know more about the Drupal values, there's a, there's a link there, uh, drupal.org slash about slash values and principles. But we feel between us, the things that have really helped us contribute and are continuing to help us contribute, we've distilled them down a little bit and we've come up with the following. Finding something that brings you joy. Um, we, we are pa we're passionate about Drupal, we're passionate about the community, and we, we try to find things that, uh, that uh, interest us. And we also find that people can get stressed out, they can get burned out, and they can quit. So if you're looking after yourself, and you're looking after the things that bring you joy, maybe you won't quit. Maybe you'll, you'll hang in there and you'll, you'll, you'll continue to contribute. Um, Effective contributors don't just try and impress people. They're, they're there to take care of themselves. They're there to get something out of it, that a feeling or credits or, or whatever that happens to be. Um, secondly, a lot of open source projects, you get by by scratching your own itch. You just, you do what you do and then you move on. Um, but things are a bit different at Drupal. As, as we talk about, there's, there's the community. The community is a huge part of Drupal and try and take take advantage of the tools and the processes. The m systems have matured over, uh, over decades and it's very well thought out and we have the issue queues and we have credit systems. Don't do your work in GitHub, don't do your work in Bitbucket. Try and, try and, try and do things the Drupal way. Um, and be aware of the community as a whole. Try and, try and um, stay in contact, tune into the community, get a pulse on how things are done and if you do those things, we, f we certainly feel you will, will, you will be effective. And there are three options here, but we're telling you to pick three. So if you do all three of these things, you may be on your way to being a, an effective Drupal contributor. And uh, at this point, we, uh, that, that's the end of the presentation, but what we would like to do is, if anyone has questions, feel free to to call out, but if anyone has any other habits that we haven't touched on, things that have worked for you, we'd love to hear about those. These are just what worked for us. Maybe you do something different. So, thank you. Any questions? Yep. Yeah, the question was, do we find time every day or is it more as and when we need to? We're fortunate to work for Lullabot where we get 10 hours a week of um, what we call success time, where we can use it for contribution, we can use it for personal, professional development. For me personally, it's been, it, it hasn't been every day, it's as and when, like I, I maybe have other things going on. Um, or when issues happen to come up on modules I maintain and things like that. I try to find time. I, I also try to front load my billable work so then Fridays I can focus on, on contribution. But we're aware that not everyone has the access and the privilege that we do to contribute, so it's probably different for, for others. I would add that I do things differently based on whatever I'm involved with at the time. 
So there are certain roles where if you want to contribute, you can sort of step up and take responsibility. And I have felt like, for example, when I was working on the, the configuration management initiative, that I would check the issue queue every day because I felt like one of the most beneficial things I could do would be to keep issues moving forward. Oh, it looks like this one's stuck. Oh, it looks like you know, this one needs review and maybe go nudge somebody who I think would review it. And I felt like that was the best way I could be useful rather than just going heads down for three days into some gnarly patch. So there are other times where, you know, if I'm, if I'm doing something else, like I'm working, like I was working on something with uh, Tim Lanen where we are trying to sort of get our GitLab instance set up so it could work with the Drupal's unique credit system where it was more of like a heads down kind of thing where I had nothing going on in the issue queue where I was focused on like talking at conferences and doing other things and that, you know, I was thinking about it maybe every day or writing articles or blog posts for Drupal.org or something like that. But it's a very different kind of, you know, engagement. So. I'm saying it over and over again in a million ways, like teachers do, like as a reminder that you, you can find your own way for what works for the particular way you want to contribute. And because that has such a wide variety, I wouldn't, I would say that some days, yes, it, sometimes when I'm contributing, it is every day, kind of like a job and other times, not so much. Uh, to repeat the question, it, it, are there habits that are very Drupal-centric and do not apply elsewhere that maybe we should revisit because it's harder to attract other developers uh, or contributors uh, from outside Drupal to Drupal? I mean, the biggest thing was always, the patch process was always very strange, but that that's been that is continuing to be addressed with the the merge request workflow, which is far more in line with what you'd expect uh, at other open source communities. I don't do a lot of other open source contribution. Yeah. I mean, I, my short answer would be yes. Like, there are lots of weird Drupalisms that we have. But I think it's a complex thing because there's, there's technical reasons we have some of those complex workflows, and we're trying to you know, we've, we're talking about reducing the friction. That was one of the goals that Dries outlined and that the Drupal Association has identified, reduce friction. And I think that's what they're talking about. And on the other hand, I know that some people sort of love all of the different sort of unique things and that gives them, that gives them some joy to, to, to use, like I still like to use patches <laughs> on Drupal.org. I like to be able to link to them in my, for my client work and whatnot. And you know, everybody's got their own thing. So I've never been one to say like, oh, we all should do this one particular way. I, I do, I'm kind of like a sit on the sidelines for some of these kinds of things and, and kind of move with the flow. But I do, I do feel like there are, in general, there are lots of weird things that we do that people can sort of figure out. But I do feel also, for example, we have a really good system of bringing people on who happen to have to be able to go show up at a Drupal camp or a Drupal con. And then oftentimes there's really great volunteers, mentors. And I feel like some of that weird friction, like, I personally feel like that can be great at building interpersonal relationships. And I'm not so interested in all of the technical fixes to those sorts of problems. And I'm more sort of enamored with how the Drupal community continues to find ways to have human beings help human beings create software. 
So that's my own personal take. You've had your hand up for a while. Yeah, Tommy from outside of the group of community too. Yeah, I still love it where it's stuck. Uh, but, you know, I think every community has that. And we talk to, you know, we talk to GitHub for all types of contributions. GitHub, it might be two minutes, for example. Uh, but one thing I was thinking about that we haven't experienced with in the type of Lee community, uh, you mentioned Slack. And Slack is a good place for, you know, if you don't want to be so visible, it's easy to ask a question in Slack. But if you want to specifically ask us and really make yourself useful as a contributor of questions, uh, ask your question in a public space like Slack or Discord because it is and you optimize. It's actually available for others who might Google your question later. Uh, and find an answer to it. And I think that's that's an important thing to think about as well as, you know, asking a question is actually a really important uh, way of contributing. Uh, because if you look at documentation, it's mostly written by people who already know how to do it, which means they are basically disqualified from, uh, from knowing all of the problems in the beginning, right? So um, it's really important Thank you. That was wonderful. I can't totally summarize that, but just for the recording and maybe anyone who didn't hear that, I think the, the idea that Drupal and any open source project has places where people can ask questions that get lost, but if we do things in the open web or do things in places that are more public, then that can be useful to the next person, and that's a general thing across projects. I don't know if that's a fair summary. But for the Drupal community, for sure, like I actually, I was really hesitant to use Slack, especially because I'm more of a free software advocate and I wanted to keep things on IRC. But I want our community to also be welcoming and people know Slack and whatever, but then it, like, you know, it makes it so those questions get lost in the ether, but they were also lost in the ether with IRC, so fine, whatever. Uh, in the back. <laughs> we do. I think. I think the Drupal is the the pat the past few Drupal cons they just like automatically add the speakers to credit. I I could look up my my page. I think that shows up, but I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, you could. No. Actually, I think those are outlined somewhere. I was looking for exactly where it is, but again, it's a very human system. It's designed to have human interactions, where I showed that chart earlier on where it's like there's these different ways to contribute. This, this whole uh, idea of selecting who gets credit is, is offloading the choicefulness to a human being rather than just saying, oh, because you reach 10, you automatically get credit. So um, I would say in general, we don't give credit for attending a session at DrupalCon, but we do give credit to speaking at DrupalCons generally. That's the, that's the community agreed upon way of doing things as far as I understand it. Well, I can answer that in saying that it's complex, but for the most part, Lullabot tells us do what they they follow the bring what brings you joy essentially, and they try not to give us the the incentives to do one particular thing, but there's clearly some motivation to do things that will help, and sometimes people will do things because they need to for a client or something like that, but 
uh, in general, we're not usually like incentivized to help, but I think a lot of us just want to help each other. So like right now, Lullabot sponsoring Christina Chamias to work for six months, you know, full time on Drupal Core. And there's a lot of people that want to see her succeed in some of the goals that she set. So is there like, are we like, would that look good for the company for Lullabot to have somebody working on things that got completed? Yeah, of course. Like when we were working on Olivero, there were like seven or eight people that um, were working together. We had designers, we had front end developers, we had back end developers. And a lot of that stuff happened um, because we wanted to work together and, and get this thing over the over the, um, the finish line. And it was definitely good marketing juice for Lullabot to have, to have us help finish that and the admin theme, Claro and Olivero around the same time. Like, we're not, you know, we understand <laughs> that it helps our company. We're an employee-owned company. We all benefit. So that's kind of a long answer. But in general, I would say it's no. But people that, some people like, like Owen and I, like we just like the Drupal community. We like to hang out. We like to like the people. Lori, last question. Yeah, I think more of an anecdote than a question. Yeah, you want to uh, share? You can you can wrap it up, Lori. All right. So something that brings me joy when I work on client projects is when I get to remove a batch file from my composer JSON file, <laughs> and that's something that I've been thinking about, like how can it be more effective when we add those patch files in the composer JSON file? And maybe there's a tip for people. When you download a patch file or add it to your composer JSON, spend a couple minutes to understand what is going on the issue. What can you do to help the issue move forward? And if everyone does one little step to help the issue move forward, I think a lot of the issues where, that are applied on a lot of sites would get done faster. Right now, what is happening instead is just people are basically telling on the issue that I applied this patch on a site. And it doesn't necessarily, it's not necessarily what the issue needs to help move forward. Sometimes it can be hard to figure out what is the next step, but maybe going on Slack and asking, how can I help this issue move forward, would be the, the best next step to figure out what, what needs to be done. Um, this is something I wanted to share because of I've come across quite a few issues that, where I've realized that this is something that probably hundreds, if not thousands, sites are applying. Thank you. And congratulations on the, uh, you're becoming a core project, product manager. product manager today, part of Drupal Core. And we're done. I think we hit our time limit. So thank you all for coming very much. <laughs>